Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. Resolve. Last time. <laughs> Fireworks. Like, really? That was the... <laughs> it's just kind of... She didn't, she didn't Miss Venus even say, I've never heard a gunshot, but I think it sounds something identical to this. We should have known, bro. Should, whoops, I had, had that by accident. Oh, there you are, Odo. What kept you, my dear fellow? Uh, work. Hello, Sholmes. Hello, Gina. You sure about what you said there? That the boss, you know, actually died the day before? It's pretty hard to swallow. Yes. I was shocked by the revelation too, Gina. As was I. Possibly more shocked than both of you combined times two. Also known as Squared. It's it's not a competition, Sholmes. But I was more shocked than all of you put together. <laughs> uh, anywho, this is the autopsy report in question, is it? Yes. It's strange there's no time of death noted. I suppose there's a simple explanation. Perhaps it was a deliberate omission. Why would why would that be omitted? Like, think about it. Who, whose side would the coroner be on? Oh, dear. If it was deliberate, puts me in mind of the last case we worked on. <gasps> With Dr. Scythe. I know. Anyway, seems that on the day before Lord Van Zeeks discovered his body, Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League. So perhaps something happened with them. Come to think of it. You had some trouble with that league too, didn't you? You were taken in by their trick, as it were? No, 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 no. You have it all wrong. Naturally, I wasn't taken in. As you put it here and there, my sleuth hound interest was merely piqued slightly by the rare scent of weekly four pound income. So you were tricked. That and that scent masked the underlying scent of deception, I suppose. The two criminals in question are the pair we saw being arrested yesterday, aren't they? Wait, we saw them? In Mr. Sholmes' suite, I mean. That's right, Suze. And it was me that took him in. Thanks to a tip off by a good law-abiding citizen. Really, now? Indeed, yours truly. Oh, I guess we missed all this. So it's going to be the pair in the witness stand next. Is it? Something doesn't quite make sense to me, though. The day before Inspector Gregson was found, you hadn't had trouble with the Red-Headed League yet, had you? Why would the Inspector have been investigating them? Well, the likely explanation would be that Gregson's own sleuth hound interest was piqued by the rare scent of weekly four pound nickel. <laughs> Don't tie with the same brush as you, Sholmes. He's a good man with a good job. Well, he was. He, uh... Anyhow. There's the whole issue of Inspector Gregson being investigated by Lord Van Zeeks for some time. The Reaper, the Red-Headed League, Inspector Gregson, and Lord Van Zeeks, as well as Kazama. I feel as though we knew we'd arrive at this point somehow. Gosh, I think you're right. What's he really trying to achieve here today? Uh, <laughs> weekly four pence for <laughs> prosecuting. <laughs> no, no, no. All the answers will be soon revealed. Observe the time, my dear fellow. Well, we gotta go back in? The recess will be over shortly. All right. Well, better hop to it. Cosmo was determined that he should be the one to prosecute this trial. And he was determined that I should take the defense. Just what is he hoping to make me see? I wonder. I get the feeling we're a long way from the end of this trial yet. Yeah, I'm all right with that. I mean, clearly has to be something about his dad, but does he know some information we don't? And if he brings that up, will we be able to unearth it? Yeah, no. I feel like that's how it's going to play out. Are you ready then, Mr. Sato? Yes. Let's test Daddle then. It's good to have her back. Gosh, the thing about last time was just me and Iris. Goodness. Come a long way since then. And yet, not far enough. Let's get back to it. I hereby declare the court in session again. We resume the closed case court, the court here, and the Baron Von Zeke's here present, who stands accused of that murder. Now then, Prosecutor Asogi. My lord? Have you summoned the witnesses as requested? Yes. 
from two members of the Red Edda League who planned and carried out the deception. They arrived not long ago from the local prison by police carriage. Very good. Alright. Bailiff. I'll show the two men in here. Oh, two. Getting some deja vu. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey, that don't look that bad. I'm a pepper pasta kind of guy. I can get behind that. The scamming, not so much. These two men are currently being held by the police on suspicion of attempted extortion. You may admit your occupations, but state your names now for the court. What do I do here? I'm Fabian Du... Rousseau. A descendant of the great Rousseau family from Nice in France. Um... Would, th would this be a little kid? I don't... And Maya, my name's Pepino de Rossi. Um... I'm the third son of the great Familia de Rossi, a landowner from Napoli. I... I... Alright, moving on. Th th these two are men? That's a little boy! These two men first became acquainted at a boarding school for European nobility. I was just tiny. Those who graduate from Temsic are the future leaders of Rioria. But do you have any idea how boring it is to be born with the noble blood? Alors, I make it my mission to get the better of the world by employing these little gray cells of my blade. That is all I'm trying to do. Ugh. He didn't end the sentence like that, but... Yes, being comfortably wealthy and taking care of your whole life. So boring and I feel so bad for you. So that's the only reason for this whole grand deception you've been carrying out. To manipulate people? Really? We. Oui. You could say that. Not bad, eh? Here's the grand ideals, but the petty plans. This strange combination is the charm of the hilarious brothers. Yahoo! See, Capo. Uh, listen to me, Peppino. I have two things to say to you. Oh, Jay, are you about to tell me when your grandia antidotes? Everybody. Firstly, I want you to stop calling me this, Capo. And secondly, we are not the Aphelarius brothers. This is a serious business. Chapolo! There it is! The couple's trump card! <laughs> the fur brow! It is deep, eh, couple? The fur and the meaning of your words. What is wrong with this video game? They're so stupid. And I talk like this, man. Now, I'm not saying all Texans are dumb, but you gotta admit, he, you know, the character I'm based on, he wasn't a scholar. He has street smarts, though. I'm getting ahead of myself. The court's been led to believe that under the banner of the Redhead League, you have conspired to swindle money from unsuspecting members of the public. Is that true? Oui, c'est ça. And what exactly was the nature of this deception? What would you plan? Ah. Uh, alors. I will explain it. No, Capo! Leave it to me! Um, as you see, we both have the vivid red hair, no? At school, we were teased for this without pity. Oh, the couple here. He was many times behind the schoolhouse, crying like the Trevi Fountain. <laughs> Cries in French. <laughs> Those dogs. One day, the world will respect us redheads. Every night. He would bury your head in- Trebian Pepeno, enough! I will explain the rest. Thank you, though. The first step was the newspaper advertisement. About one week before the plan was to put into operation, we listed the same notice in every paper in London. Okay. We saw it. Mass marketing. It has, it has its uses. Even in scamming, I guess. It was the one I believe entitled Redhead League, correct? Oui. I am honored that you have seen it. It states that the only condition for joining the League is having flame-colored hair. 
and that if you satisfy the interview panel, you're admitted into the league. And you could receive a weekly income of four pounds. Quite a crazy song. On the date specified, the red-headed hopeful gathered in droves at a park specified in the advertisement. And from each person present, this pair took an application fee of five shillings. Wait, five shillings to get four? Oh my god. And with the money to France? It was a plan most elegant, no? <sighs> no. It was most dishonorable. But to be frank, I'm stunned anybody was foolish enough to be taken in by such an obvious trick. The park was described by one witness as choked with red-headed folk. Like a coaster orange barrow? Okay. And the day on which all these men gathered to apply was the day before the victim was discovered. Crucially, these two men spoke face to face with every single person present that day. We, oui. I have seen more red-headed people in the one day than I have seen in my entire life. See, si, see, si. and I know every time I see the couple's head, I feel sick to my stomach. But not your own. Okay. Why have we been summoned here today? Uh, you don't know? The date of our trial was not until tomorrow. So I was told. Naturally. Neither of these men have been told any details about this trial. They did not watch the previous episode. Here's a recap. They've only been shown this photo. Uh, okay. So we gotta fill them in. Mr. Uh, Rassau and Mr. DeRossi, you'll now give your testimonies on the subject of the gentleman in this photograph. Of course. We are always ready to help with the law. <laughs> I feel really bad if these are like Italian accents and like I'm just way off base. Admittedly, it, it's been a minute since I've, in, I've, I've integrated with any French media. What can I say? We had more than 1,000 red headed people assemble in the park on Lime Street that day. But I don't recall the man in this photograph. A couple? None. I don't remember him. Obviously, he's dead now, but I assure you, he was not in the park. Oh, Laura, this victim is a nothing to do with us. You have a lot to answer for, Fabino. It is your fault that we got caught in the first place. Okay. I mean, they just say they never saw him. Really? You've given sworn testimony that this man in the photograph was not present. Can you be certain? Oh, we oui, we. Oui. I'm quite certain. We did not interview this man. Nobody looked like it. He's came to the park. This I can promise. It must be noted that you've been arrested for a grand deception, however. Accordingly, this court has little confidence in your uh, assurances. Uh, Ufa? <laughs> With this attitude, we get to nowhere, huh? He's really a s sulking now? Why do you say it like that? Like... This confidential document was obtained directly from Scotland Yard. It records an entry from the inspector's private diary, dated the day before the incident. It reads, Lime Street, Red-Headed League, Undercover. Ah, I have the answer. Maybe there was another similar event in the park on the day in question. Yeah, fat chance. That is ridiculous, Papino. There's no question that Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red League, but he didn't make it? Which means it's quite possible that's when he was killed. Oh, very well. The defense will proceed with the cross-examination now. Uh, yes, my lord. Well, come on, then. Also, I looked it up. Papino is like an Italian name. I don't, I don't know if... Uh, anyway. We had the more than 1,000 red-headed people assemble in the park on Lime Street that day. Okay, over a thousand. But I don't call the man in the photo. Hey, Capo. Wait, crap. No, no, go back, go back. Uh, I don't remember him. Now, obviously, and he's obviously dead now. But I assure you, he was not at the park. Hold it! Who said he was dead? According to what you said, you spoke with a thousand or more people that day. Oui, that's true. 
My eyes were burning by the end of the day. <laughs> Surely then, you can't actually remember every single face. How are you so certain that this particular man wasn't present? You expect us to believe that? No, my dear head is very distinctive, eh? But not when you have 1,000 minutes crowding around. Then it's just an eyesore. But if there was someone other information you could give, maybe we could recall. Mm hmm That is not the line, Pepino. <laughs> remember, we do not remember him. We are sure of that fact, huh? If there was a man with the red hairpiece, but his mustache did not match the color, then I do not think I would have forgotten him. Okay, Cosmo said there, these two had only shown that photograph, and they, they've been told nothing else at all. they just seen the photograph. Okay. But what if I fed them just another detail about the victim? Fish and Shay did do that often. Huh, I need to see the photograph again. Oh, yeah, you can see his must- All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was about to say, I thought that would be obscured. Wait, let's talk about- <laughs> Well, don't a lot of London people eat- I don't know, if it- Might as well. I can certainly appreciate that just knowing the man and had red hair wouldn't mean you'd remember him in this situation. But what if I told you the man was always munching on a packet of fish and chips? Do you remember a man who was eating incessantly? Mm, not really. I was looking only at the heads of the applicants. I wouldn't have noticed the fish and chips any more than the caviar and smoked salmon. Oh, that sounds so good right now. Do spaghetti! I love this. Sound. This is like. <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's racist, but oh my god. My name is De Rossi. I live in Italy. Ah, Mario. It's holy freaking Jesus. We get it. Really, I had no idea. Tell Zim again what you saw before Bibino. See, si, Capo. I say it again and again. Okay, that wasn't it. What if we did the other options, though? <laughs> Gotta hand it to him. The fella's agile. What if I told you the man in the red hair piece was actually a detective? The man in the photograph? A detective? Yes. Uh, it would appear he found your notice in the paper suspicious, and decided to investigate incognito. Hmm. Sorry, but this. Uh, what the heck? Excuse me. What? What you want about? Out with a Pepino. Something to add, Mr. Rossi? So it's pretty safe to say these these aren't Mr. Vigil anymore. Like these are these are kids, right? You're like 19. Actually, we can check. Woo. Good college age, maybe a little older. Wait, is that where you that? I can't do it right now, whatever. Ah, oh, see, I'm always adding something. Parmesan, olive oil, pep. He knows what he's about, all right. Uh, what I mean is, did you not agree with your friends? Last remark, by any chance? Eh, what did he just say about the detective? Yes, that... Keep your mouth shut, Papino. You have summed enough already. Papa to why, Capo? What is the problem? There was a man who said, Ah, I am inspector from Scotland Yard. <laughs> Good Lord. Also, he keeps jumping down. He's going to break that goddamn box of his. Oh, my God. Order. Explain this. Vault face in your testimony, witness. It's simple. A man who was at the park said to us, There was no such man. He speak lies. Only I speak truths. Now, what you say, Capo? Had you forgotten already? <laughs> I have not forgotten anything, Rosie. But you know, nobody like this came to the park. Pasta, pasta. You beat me out of many things, but not uh, two. The memory in the meals. <laughs> like I said, when it's time to eat the pasta, no one is faster. This is so big. <laughs> Sorry. My God, this stereotype. But you are inferior to me in every other way. So shut up. Objection. That's mean. 
He's trying his best, you turd! And that is really no reason to be loud. The trap tut. The damage is done! I. Indeed it is. What are you pulling now? Ooh. There was a man who came to the bug and said uh, he was an inspector from Scotland Yard. However, he looked nothing like the man in the photograph. He was someone else. How can you be so sure? Because, to start with, the face is completely different. See, si, tis true, tis true. The man who came was, eh, uh, younger. A face clean shaven. His eyes were sadder. His chin was thinner. Huh? What are they talking about? No resemblance whatsoever, then. Anyway, I thought I was not going to be fooled. I took the obvious precaution and said to him, If you are really a detective, show us some proof. Ah, uh, see, si, see, si, the couple here, he doesn't take a no nonsense, eh? But he was well prepared. He said, uh, an identification. Really, he had a badge. Okay. That is most unconvincing. S wait, sorry, my lord? What? Consul, no incognito inspector would offer his identification for inspection. It's out of the question. Right, there's no point. Why would he expose his true identity? Clearly, the papers were fake. Soto, you are a genius, capo. As we say in Italia, it takes a thief to recognize another, eh? Uh, okay. <laughs> what happened after he announced that he was a detective? It became very annoying. He said, you are under investigation. So I took his papers from him and chased him out of the park. Really? It was fantastical. And look, here's an I... Metropolitan Police warrant. So you stole it from the man? He had it coming. He made us very scared. But he was a snot uh, not who he said he was. Then it's possible he stole that? The person described does not appear to behave as a true inspector would. However, I believe to be prudent of these identification papers were entered into evidence. <laughs> what I like it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Rossi's growing on me, son of a gun. Now let us return the witness's testimony. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. First things first. How old is this little scamp? I, I just, I just want to know. Let's see what we got. I suppose we should see what this inspector's identification looks like inside. Uh. What? Am I supposed to know what this is? <laughs> It definitely looks fake, doesn't it? Out of interest. What name is given? Probably just something plucked out of thin air. Oh, wait, it's Tobias Gregson! What? What? Do these all look fake? Scotland Yard insignia. It looks genuine to me. But how? In the department. An identification number details are correct as well. Since when? Why are you keeping track of this? Is I, I, <laughs> gosh, she's a nerd. Do you mean to say? I know it seems incredible, but yes. I think this is a genuine identification book issued by Scotland Yard. So he really was there? Then they're lying! That's unbelievable! Okay. Card is... Wait. Inspector Gregson's police identification is the official warrant card. But why would he say he's undercover? Is there anything else I'm missing here? No, okay, we got it. Um, the victim has nothing to do with us. Okay. I don't remember him. He's obviously dead now. I'm sure he was not at the park. Well, sir, this is his genuine book. Objection. How do you explain that? The evidence says otherwise. I wonder if I could ask you to examine this identification book closely. Miss Lestrade. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miss Lestrade's not even in that corner, Naruto. You pointed at me. 
But back to the point, why Miss Lestrade? What is your intention here, Council? Is this really a fake? Or is it genuine? That's the question. Which, uh, I can't really answer myself, so... <laughs> Whoa! Don't be ridiculous. No Scotland Yard detective would allow his or her identification to be stolen. Uh, whoa. What's going on, Ginny? That, that, that's the boss's. No question about it. It can't be. As I suspected, the undercover detective who attended the Redheaded League's enrollment on the day in question was the real inspector. Tobias Gregson, carrying out an incognito investigation! Z- Z- uh, I don't even know what that is. I don't, be honest, I don't even- Like, I'm French. I don't even know, like... What was that, bro? I- uh, or, Order! But, if the boss had his identification stolen, he would have reported it straight away. I mean, he was always on about me about it. If you lose some art, report it at once, he'd say. Could it be, then, that the inspector was physically enabled to- Oh my god. Wait, what? What do you mean? If he died, then how do these guys- What? Physically, eh? What are you saying? I actually don't understand. I'm confused. Una what are you suggesting? Come on, guys. It's called dramatic tension. I'm not going to tell you straight away. It was quite possible that he was killed before he had the chance to report his identification had been stolen. No. That's... Then... Who do these guys see at the park? Can... Can we just describe what he looked like, other than the red hair? Genuinely. Defense... Posits. That the victim was killed the day before his body was discovered, at a different location. Do you two have anything to say about that? Oh! <laughs> oh no, nothing! I don't know nothing! Fries and italics. Pull yourself together, Pepino. Mondo. You can behave a little more like a master criminal than that, no? <laughs> no, I wish I had a new time to Italia. <laughs> Lesson learned crime doesn't pay. It sucks. Oh, he's crying too. Don't stop crying, Pepino, please. Otherwise, I. <laughs> Alarm, stop your whining and start talking, you bums. Well, I'm up. Oh, oh no, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. But you would tell everything or face the worst possible outcome. You understand? <laughs> boys will be boys. They do be crying. You know what I mean? Uh, just me? Okay. You will dry your eyes and testify again about these identification papers and the precise circumstances under which you came by them. I'm not doing it again. I'm sick of this crap. For crying out loud. I'm sick of this crap. And it just started. Okay. Boys. Now that you know how serious this is. As if their trial tomorrow wasn't going to be serious. <laughs> the tooties. We took him prisoner. <laughs> what? And get him in the night at our secret hideout. Even though I didn't think he was any detective. I was too scared to let him go that day just in case. I took the man's identification from him and shot him in a room in the, the room next to us. There might have been a little tussle, but we did not harm him. And the next morn, we let him go. <laughs> he spent a night in a nice room. It was nothing like a prison, really. He had pillows and scones and ah. Does anyone notice? Papino's like, I guess he's got makeup on. Is that what's going on? Like, he, his face is really pale, but his his neck's kind of, you know, red. Not to say he's a, you know, uh, I'm going to stop. This is outrageous. You imprisoned the man. But no, but no, 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 see, no, 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 see, no, 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 no. It was not like a prison. He just wasn't allowed to leave. <laughs> he's very comfortable and happy. A couple. Uh, <coughs> It, uh, was never part of my plan, I swear it. Hmm. So you think it was my fault, eh? Just because I got the date of the ferry wrong by one little day. 
I do not think it was your fault, Papino. I know it. No, no, no. Per favore. It is a not the fair. <laughs> you guys shut up. <laughs> worse than the Skulkin brothers. Way worse. Well, I'm gonna say that. You shall have plenty of time for squabbling back in prison, gentlemen. Oh, I don't believe this. How oh, good. You have been a real detective. Counsel for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination. So on the day before the incident, Gregson spent the night confined in the pair's hideout. Okay. Now what is weird about their testimonies? Nothing really stood out at the very start. So yet again, I'm gonna probe everything. That's what we do around here. Do, do you realize what you're saying, man? You have to believe me. I had no intention of that happening, and I'm sure the detective did not intend it either. Yeah, no one actively wants to get kidnapped. Duh. But there was nothing else I could do. See, nothing else. That was the first time, first crime for the couple. He was at the end of his wits. I've told you before, Bibino. That is not the way to describe a criminal mastermind. What about this hideout of yours? An old empty house? The park on Lime Street, so not Fresno. Unless they're really close and I'm just not aware. We rented the place for two days. It was an inspired idea by him. An impulsive idea, I must say. No, 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 not impulsive, inspired. <laughs> inspired by you? Is that, is that what you're gonna? What am I supposed to say to that, ah? Uh, baby, no! It was the house described that you confined Inspector Gregson, was it? Ah, uh, oui. But you have to remember, I was under the impression that he was a pretender, not a real inspector. Still an innocent person. You know, like, oh, he's make-believing he's crazy. You shouldn't imprison him for that, like, uh. That doesn't quite add up. Though, if you didn't think he was a real inspector, there would have been no reason to take him prisoner. Would there? Where's your motive, dude? I... Uh, you are right. But we couldn't comple completely certain. <laughs> what was their plan, then? I guess just lock him in there, and then... The person they rented it from would be like, uh, You guys haven't paid in a bit. You know, like... <laughs> Could have died there. Goodness. I guess, like, find out. We gotta, like, probe more. You know, I didn't think it was a real detective. I was too scared to let him go that day just in case. All right. And it's obviously going to say I was scared of getting arrested. Duh. Which the man's identification and shut him up in a room next to ours. It's a tussle. Tell me about this tussle. Did it arrange the room by chance? Just curious. What do you mean by it, little tussle? <sighs> it was nothing. Just a minor incident. The Falso Inspector. He was a real piece of work, huh, Capo? What happened? Oof. <laughs> I really like the onomatopoeia. <laughs> I think it's a real word. I'm using it as onomatopoeia. Sounds like a Digimon. Got him to get extracted. Ah! It was a disaster. We gave him a nice room, and what does he do? In the middle of the night, he tries to escape through a ventilator. Can you blame him? He's imprisoned. We chased him. And we caught him again. Can you blame us? Yes, you instigators. <sighs> Terrible people. Wait. You... You didn't. You shot the man in your haste? Uh, so who do you think we are? Of course not. Why would we get such a thing? We are but boys. We but... I simply caught him. I caught him again and took him back. He's literally got spaghetti sauce on his mouth. Dude, if they did this with an American, he can't, he just, what's the equivalent? I guess just having a cheeseburger in his mouth, right? <laughs> Eat your cheeseburgers, Apollo. Anyway, young man, to your food. We want you in jail, but we don't want you to die. Mr. DeRossi. There's something wrong. <laughs> ah, me? Oh, me? Ah, 
Something Mr. Derosu just said seemed to make you go, um... Well, it seemed to make you act even more strangely than usual. Cavolo! At times like that, you don't want to have the capo after you, believe me. And I speak from a personal experience. This little kid, he's... He's too... Just dude, come on! Turn your back on crime! You had your whole life at it, yo! I'm upset. Personal experience. That's easy now, baby, no. There's no need to say more. That too it is. The night before we put the Red Hat League plan into action, I was scared. I was not a fair to be the cop. I was not a fair to the capo, but I tried to run away. Okay. It's a shame you didn't manage it. Yeah, what I got a, you know, I've been a lot, you want to be in jail right now. Or soon to be. But the capo here, he came after me like the turbine, huh? He dragged me back to the house, kicking and screaming. I said I have a bruise to prove it. This is abuse. What the dump? Bruise, you say? Mmm, no, uh, whoa, around the neck? You wanna see m Around the neck? Around the neck. Also, oh, they're, wait, they're 25 and 26? Y'all some bombs. What are you doing? I thought Pepino was like, you know, He's like just 20 years old. 25 at this time? Naruto's a goddamn lord. Like, oh. Stay in school, bro. A froster behind the Red Hate League. He derives from French and aristocrats, it seems. Is that also a lie? I guess not. If, you know, they went to school together. Okay, so somehow gossip is involved. Can't believe it. I've turned into a gossip channel. Ugh. How redundant. That's enough now, Bibino. I want to look at any part of you. Oh, what to do, huh? I show you or do I not? I show you or do I not? You do now! Okay. Is everybody ready to see? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh. I still invisible, huh? So we used. Did he use a thing to catch animals? Like a. Like, you know that, that pole that you catch people? It's a ring. You got that when he dragged you back to the house, is it? The couple. Sometimes he's a very. This has enough. He's not happy, Bino. Do not continue. But Bino's neck is nothing to do with what you're talking about. You have my word. Do we know? What is your opinion, Council? I got him. Red necked. It's got to be a better way to say that. I. It is important. Super important. Mr. DeRossi. I'm gonna have to ask you to amend your testimony now. My capo, you see? Everyone in this interest would I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> this kid's a handful, man. You picked the worst partner in crime ever. Now you amend a testimony. Uh, if you really want to know, I will tell you. Now we just need to connect the dots to gossip, and we're good. He tried to escape, but the capo put the call. Put a collar on me and drag me back. Really now, tell me more about this collar. Are you saying the red mark was caused by a... See, a big collar made from a leather. A leather collar. Why does he have a... Uh, is this true, Mr. DeRosu? <laughs> he had the Saint Bernard. When I was young? A dog? A dog collar? Excuse me? What are the... I mean, maybe that's a coincidence. The souvenir from that time with a very strong chain. A chain, you say? You put that around your friend's neck. I'm sorry. I was so angry that he left me alone. You did not have to tie the chain to the leg of a bed, huh? I would not have tried to run again. Jesus. You didn't do that to Inspector Gregson, too, did you? The people as an equal. It's the capo his motto. This guy's a handful. I'm starting to sound more like a prison, after all. My capos are tough. Put the capo in his rough. 
Stop talking, Papino, you effing moron. I shouldn't have done it. I should not have. So the following morning, you released the inspector. How so? Yeah, they had a ring around his neck, just like a me. Papino, leave it now. Now you know, huh? The couple, you don't want to tangle with him. But for the inspector, he's not so bad. Really? Okay. Ah, oh, god dang, I keep doing that. Not much to go on. Are you kidding me, Norahodo? Well, we can't present Mr. Gossip, but... I mean, it's, it's in clear view. That clap, that crap's clearly not there. Objection. What's going on, fellas? So the day before the body was discovered, Inspector Gregson was taken prisoner while working a cut. No, Ryanosuke. No, no, it was not like that. It was only a prison. It was a invitation to stay. It was only. However, you described it. There's one glaring inconsistency that remains. Which is that? It would. I would ask the court to look closely at the photograph of the victim, Inspector Gregson. Now, I know he's a hard-working guy, but he ain't no redneck. <laughs> ah, but what the man? That makes no sense. It was me who took the color of the man in the morning, and I saw the red bruise on his neck, just like I have. Given the mark is so clearly visible on the witness's neck, we'd expect the bru same bruising beyond the victim was put in the collar more recently than Mr. DeRossi. Indeed. That is most peculiar. But why do I tell you, huh? Huh? We say this from the beginning. Many times. Okay. The man in the photograph is our endeavor from the man we are captive. Dang. Pepino's floating. Y'all see that? Oh. Order! Okay. We... Okay, we get it. <laughs> get gossip out here. Now, the rare time I'm ahead of the case. I'm impatient. It appeared then that on the day before the incident, the man who visited the park on Lime Street posing as an incognito inspector was not Inspector Gregson at all. Objection. Was it? Then how did gossip get his book? I don't understand. It's true, however. How do you explain the inspector's identification? This is a genuine identification book. It's inconceivable that someone could have stolen such an item from the inspector. The inspector made that assertion himself. <sighs> and as we know, the inspector had made a note that the Red Hat League in his diary for the day, which surely means we can't divorce the two events completely. The inconsistency noted by the defense is most troubling. We were the real Inspector Gregson. Who these two redhead gentlemen encountered. The fact that no bruising can be seen around his neck defies explanation. But equally, they actually encountered an imposter. How did that person come to be in possession of the real inspector's identification? Does the defense have some plausible explanation? Uh, he stole it? I don't know, somehow. I'm not, I'm not profiling, I'm just saying, it, it's possible. It is for precisely these occasions that we keep meticulous notes in the court record, Mr. Naruto. Because these are the facts, and the facts cannot lie. No, the facts can't lie. Even when they point to something so incredible, it's almost unbelievable. Well, my lord, the true identity of the person who turned up in the park for the Redhead League's enrollment is revealed by information in the court record. I believe. Good gracious, really? <sighs> Very tantalizing, Mr. Naruto. So why don't you help us all to see whatever the truth is you've apparently seen? I, I got you. It, uh, wait, who exactly is the inspector that appeared? It's an imposter. It's a fake. It's so imposing. Duh. Though it seems incredible, I admit, the undeniable facts point to one thing. Since no bruises can be found on the victim's neck, the person who these two red-headed men took prisoner cannot be Inspector Gregson. In other words, your whole argument up to now has been a waste of time. Objection. Not necessary. No, 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 no. Put in words on my mouth. Goodness. I'm not done yet. What? What? I say again? I can't stop saying that. 
There's no bruising on the victim's neck. So the question immediately poses next to is, who exactly was the man in the park on Lime Street? Found to be carrying Inspector Gregson's identification. Because then he must know what happened to Gregson to get that. That's all right. We tell the same story every time. And you do not believe us until this point in time. Whoever this man was, the couple dragged him from a pillar to a post with the dog collar. Ah, but you know, it's not so harsh as you say. It was a gentle dragging, you know. It's, it's, uh, it was dragging, yes, but... So who was the fossil inspector? I... Who was a he? Clearly. The defense has an idea about that. About the true identity of the man these two imprisoned that night. It's starting to sound like Van Zeke, so I'm getting too into it. Oh my God. I must ask the council for the events to elaborate post haste. Who did it? Who did it? I mean, I straight up would not have guessed this if I just wasn't looking. I gotta say, I lucked into this so hard. Also, how old is he? Dang, honestly, I wish I could look like that at 51. He ain't, he, he looks tough as nails, bro. Also, yeah, we knew who Mr. Vigil is. Different person. I feel dumb. Why did they just call him Sandwich? This is so stupid. <laughs> anyway, goodness me, it's a jerk. It's a, it's a. One of the witnesses who was in the stand in this very courtroom earlier today. A nameless man whose only occupation appears to be peddling hearsay. Objection. What on earth would a street seller be doing with a police inspector's identification papers? Witnesses, is this the man or not? What has happened to his lip? What? Oh, it's not always like that? So this man is not a rare league, eh? He's looking for the twisted lip league, no? <laughs> Perhaps rather than making such a rash claims next time, you should bite your lip instead. As, 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 as silly as that may be, it seems improbable. But one undeniable fact remains. During his testimony earlier today, I noted something around the man's neck. A red ring or bruise. What? Oh, you didn't see it? Goodness, guess he's too focused on me. The defense demands that Mr. Gossip be brought back to the stand. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, 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 order. Bailiff, bring the aforementioned witness back into the courtroom. Now! Well, there it is in plain view. Oh, I gotta do this voice again, Fred. It's, I mean, you're the one that's insist on doing the voices, man. You only got yourself to blame. I want people to be able to listen when their eyes aren't on the screen, okay? Well, I never. An undeniable ring of bruising, indeed. And identical to that of the witness beside him. Now, what's going on here, eh? I've always had this. This my year, so it's my birthmark, get it? Yeah, right. A birthmark? I assume the reason you've been recalled to the stand has been explained to you. Ah, uh, yeah. Something about an inspector again. But I'm telling you, you got it all wrong as usual. You're denying all knowledge of it. Is that right? Of course I am. Are you trying to kill me with all that nonsense, eh? No. Well, at least you have more stories to battle back on Fresno Street, won't you? Now, we're going to need you to testify again. And you, Mr. DeRossi, and Mr. DeRossi. I'm sure you'll cooperate this time, won't you? Do we have any choice? We are in big trouble, eh, Kabo? Yes. <laughs> it's quite enough delatory chatter. Proceed with the testimony. Let go. Well, young... Is he a young man? I don't even know. The man who claimed to be an inspector that day was definitely not this man. That's right, see? You think we are gonna forget these grand lips, huh? I never leave Fresno Street, all right? I've no interest in a red-headed leg. I'm all alone in the world, me. I'm 
have no kinfolk or nothing. Why would I be involved in something like that? Oh my god. Oh my god, did I just... I just had a brain blast moment. Just look at my eye! Does it look like I carry off a disguise with my face like this? We... We got him. Guys. The hair. It's... It's... It's him! It certainly appear we have the wrong man. I disagree! What have I been telling you, huh? There was no need for this pointless testimony. Ugh. That's right. I'm just a simple peddler, remember? There's no streets all I know. How would I come by police inspector's identification, Mocha? That is one thing I can't figure out. Uh, yet. Mm, a brief cross-exam, if you will. On it. Is there anyone in the courtroom who thinks I might be onto something? I do. I, I'm still your fan, kind of. I mean, I stand steadfast at your side. As your one and only fan, I guess. Uh, okay. It's... I. It all came to the front of my, front of my brain when he said... I've no... Wait, no. He didn't say that. The second part. I've no kinfolk or nothing. Because what is the clue of... Why is she here? Her younger years. I mean, that is suspect. You have to agree. You mean you have no family at all? No, none at all. So I spend my days on Fresno Street peddling tidbits to pass the boys. Hoping... Just between us, this is that eventually someone else with lips like mine will come along. Oh, really? I don't think so. You may be right. <laughs> anyway, that mark in your neck is just too much of a coincidence for us to ignore. Tis a birthmark. What's a fella to do? If you don't believe me, we're at an impasse. And there's nothing I can do but flick me lip. Okay. I'm not going to get anywhere here unless I can produce some proof. You're basically saying I dressed up and posed as some fancy inspector, are you? Well, it's be all me. What do you think I can do that? Uh, has this whole thing just been a ruse? If he really is Mr. Vigil. Just look at me. Does it look like I carry off a disguise with a face like this? You could do it with this, though. And, dude, that's why he ran off. That's why he was scared. Oh, my God. It's all making sense. You you either killed Gregson or you are an accomplice. But how do we get him? No, I can carry off a disguise with a face like this. I mean, maybe you are in disguise. Say, with a mustache or beard to cover that lip of yours. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. What if I was going to stick some fake facial hair to cover off? This fine specimen. I'd end up looking like his lordship over there, wouldn't I? Uh, uh, I beg your pardon? I assure you my lips are entirely unremarkable. And I will ask you to not cast such scrutinizing looks in my direction. Sorry, my bad. Well, Inspector Gregson did wear a mustache, of course. You're right, he did. So perhaps he was hiding something himself? <laughs> no, no, come on! He could barely even hide a crumb in a mustache of that size. Anyway, the detective we spoke with had no facial hair at all. Mm-hmm. Capo's all right. He's clean and shaven. Interesting. Certainly seems beyond the realm of possibility that the witness could have disguised himself as the victim. I. It's those as it is. Okay. I mean, that's the extent of their testimony. At least... You know, gossips. What are you feeling, Mr. Naruto? Well, Mr. Gossip says is undeniable. It'd be all but impossible to hide those lips with any form of disguise. But that happened after. Perhaps. Nevertheless, the mark of his neck is quite undeniable. It's identical to one of Mr. DeRossi. That's true. 
How do we connect the dots? I don't get it. I'd never leave Fresno, all right? Okay, never ever. Even to run away? Contradiction? Mm? You heard the redheaded league, have you? He don't got a name like Gossip for nothing, huh? It's my business to know what going off in town. I sold that tasty tidbit to a fair few redheads that came past by me. Dos Patoinos, I even got sandwich to cough up for it. Well, he does have a very red nose, if that counts. Who knows? <laughs> As you can see, my own hair's not got a hint of red in it. In any case, Fresno Street's my catch. You won't catch me sliding off to some other part of town, no. So. Oh. Excuse me. Well. Do you recognize him? And did he go to Lime Street? Is that where we're going with this? Okay. Oh, we. Can I help you? Did Mr. Gossip's words just now lead you to remember something relevant? Uh, it was the other day, when I was looking for a place near Z Park, a small house or something, to be the headquarters of your redheaded league, perhaps. I visited an housing agent on Lime Street, and there I saw him. This man was paying money to the agent. Well, now. Eh, what? Mr. Gossip, why? You had a housing agent. How could you afford that? We believe his previous testimony. He had some kind of contract in his hand, and they were clearly discussing terms. Oh, no, 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 you're mistaken, chum. Oh, yeah, never left Fresno Street, me. Like I said before, you're mistaken for someone else. Someone with the same face as me. No, no, the copper's right. I remember it too. He was a paying the man with bank notes. You have a bank account? Notes? Like I said, uh, it wa wasn't me. It was not me. Even if it's two people against one. I was curious why this man with the dirty clothes had such a money. So I looked at the man at the name of the papers. And what was written on them? Mr. Gossip? No, no, no. This man, he lies, he lies. He tells you that he has no name. But in fact, his name is Hugh Bone. Oh, dope, I was right. Is that Mr. Gossip? I think he's in no. You gotta, you gotta get a poker face. You're gonna do this crime thing, brother. I'm a battle of tidbits and information, like I said, on Fresno Street, and that's all. I don't much like folk talking about my personal life. Okay. It, it is not the intention of the court to evade the privacy of witnesses. Very well, I shall respect your wit- No, you will not! An aforementioned name shall be redacted from all court records of the trial. No objections? Objection. I have many! Sir! I'm sorry, my lord, but the defense does object. Because the name just mentioned has a very deep significance in this case. Good gracious, do, do you similarly object, Mr. Sogi? As it happens, my lord, that particular name has already been mentioned during today's proceedings. Uh, it was, uh, when, I forget. Uh, in what capacity? Hugh Bone, the name of the lace shoulder at the room. Let me put this very simply. The victim's body was discovered in your rented room. And you discovered it there. Interesting. To give yourself an alibi. I suggest, sir, that you start talking. Well, uh, all right. I suppose I might be the case, eh? We got him. Just a little more. So your real name is Hugh Bone. Is that it? Eh. Uh. Well, just between us, I don't like to blow me on trumpet, but there's no fun of peddling tidbits and doubt. Is that how, is that how he's going to say he got his money? So I. I happen to be able to afford a grubbly little room in a fallen down back street townhouse. I thought they were all expensive. Excuse me? And every once every six months, I'd go and pay the rent to agent at Lime Street. 
Oh, I, I remember now. There were two vulgar redheads in there last time. I? It's either one of us vulgar, it's not a me. <laughs> Sink again, baby, no? It cannot be me. <laughs> Why didn't you bring this up before? It's like I told you. I don't like talking about my personal life, and I'm a tidbit paddler. As far as everyone else is concerned, no fuss, right? I'm afraid not right. You'll update your testimony now. Eh, hey, oh, if I must. So the lease holder Scotland Yard has been looking for since the body was discovered has been under our noses all along. Like a lip. A fat lip. Oh, I rent the room when the fellow was found. It's true. What difference does it make? Um, lots? Because you could assemble aforementioned Goldberg machine and 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 killed or you know made a made a contraption. You see, so you live in that room, do you? No, I don't live there. Why'd you think that? There's no bed in there, just a desk. Then why would you want to rent it? Seems like a waste of money. Well, I I don't think I gotta say really. You don't have a reason not to say if you are truly innocent. Then how about the notice board in there? Which was covered from top to bottom in confidential documents only the police could have access to. Or a former... What is it called again? Oh my god. Oh my god. My mind's going blank. Warder! There we go. It's on the screen. Ah, uh, no, no. That board's not mine. The inspector must have brought it along with him. It's only the other bits and bobs that belong to me. Yes, yeah, the disc and the chair and that. You, f you cannot be serious. People don't generally carry enormous notice boards around town, especially when doing investigations. The real question is, why was Inspector Gregson killed there in your room? You have any idea? Unless you're the perpetrator. Obviously, I ain't got the faintest idea, cause I am the perpetrator. I mean, it's causing me no end of bother, to be honest. Can't see why I do it. Seems to me Mr. Gossip, um, sorry, Mr. Bunet, would rather as little is known about that room as possible. Yeah, it's fishy. And more importantly, knowing the scene of the crime is actually his room completely changes things. In particular, there's one part of his testimony that really is bothering me. Is that so? That's how I'm finally going to undo this man. What part stuck out? I'm all alone in the world. I have no kinfo. Oh, yeah, there it is. Set me up for success, Mr. Bune. Whatever your name is. If you have no kinfolk, as you put it, why would you have this photograph of this beautiful woman? I mean, uh... I presume, as you've been renting the room, that this photograph belongs to you. Oh, well, yeah. Mr. Boone, drop the pretense and tell the court exactly who you really are. Oh, I don't know what you mean. I'm a paddler. Oh, I keep telling you. You really don't need to bother with me. Please just leave it all alone. And the man says, leave it alone. Whatever the truth is about this man's life, it has no bearing on this case. I disagree. Because it's simply not possible that he impersonated Inspector Gregson. It is. How can you be so sure? <sighs> Just look at the man. No amount of disguise could ever hide that unmissable feature. Objection. That's wrong. And I can prove. I can prove he didn't have it before. Or look at it the other way around. What do you mean? Yeah, can't, what do you mean? I'm, I'm behind, I'll admit. There's no denying that Mr. Boone his lip is very prominent. Uh, but consider the possibility that his prominent lip itself part of an elaborate disguise. Oh. Uh. Then hiding that prominent feature, in other words, reveals his true face. Would make an utterly impenetrable disguise. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Hugh Bone? Uh, I'm sorry, we're, we're so ready. It's it's a wrap. We know who he really is. That's a picture of his wife. He's been gone. He's everything about him is fake. We know everything except the motive. 
Are you still hiding the truth from this court, young man? Or is he young? I, I don't know. Could be older, I guess. Hard to tell from up here. If that's a disguise, then underneath it, his true identity must be... Yes, that's right. There's really only one person he could be. My lord, the defense believes it can reveal Mr. Boone's true identity. No, no, no. Please, no. Please, no. All right, then. What is the true identity of this peddler? Go simply by the name of Gossip. Is he in here? Oh, yeah, we got him. We're done. Your real name is actually Mr. Vigil. Isn't it? Mr. Dally Vigil. I don't recall that night. Who is this? It's a name I encountered yesterday, believe it or not. It has to do with a certain client of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. A young gentlewoman came to the detective, asking him to locate her missing husband. The woman in this photograph, in fact. They're all connected. <clears throat> what? I say it again. What? From what I understand, you haven't returned home since the night before the inspector was found dead. I, um... But of course, on that night, you were being held captive by the two Red-Headed League men. And last night, you were put up by the prosecution service in preparation for testifying in this trial. Because we'd been led to believe that you, Miss Venus, and Mr. Sandwich were all homeless. Being important, witnesses in that case, we needed to know where we could find you, of course. And that explains why you've not only been able to return home, but also unable to contact your wife, who's been beside herself with worry, waiting for you at the Vigil Residence. Now, 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 you just held on a minute. What am I talking about? Really? You don't know? It's a simple enough matter to confirm my suspicions. All we have to do is pull off that disguise. No, uh, please. It's not hardly even a disguise. His hair's identical. Can't believe I didn't notice him before. Bailiff, bring soap and a sponge and a wash bowl and a salad. Well, Mr. DeRossi, Mr. DeRossi, you were restraining the witness. <laughs> oui, my lord. Si, my lord. <laughs> oh, my God. What a, what a crazy turn of events. I didn't see this coming till he mentioned... His... Don't! What? Okay. Well. Purple hair. Didn't expect that. Oh my god. He, uh, I actually didn't see that coming. I thought he just smashed his own lip. You know? Jeez. Now what? Uh, We know everything about this guy. He has motive. You know? He has a connection to the professor. Golly. And Gregson. Well, you're now seeing your true features, I presume. Oh, God, I gotta think of a new voice. Lift your head, sir, so the court can see your face. <sighs> it would appear that the defense counsel's assertion was entirely correct. This has all been a very elaborate deception. Why are you lying to me, boy? I don't lie to you. So, witness, tell the court, have you seen this man before? I don't believe it, but... See, there's no question. This is the inspector we saw at the park. Extraordinary. Dang, he had a nice suit, too. How is he getting all this money? What the... On the day of the Redhead League enrollment, the man claiming to be Inspector Gregson who appeared before Mr. DeRossi and Mr. DeRossi in the park was you, disguised as the Inspector, or rather, was you posing as the Inspector in no disguise at all. Mr. Vigil was formerly employed as the Chief Warder at the Barclay Prison. Chief Warder? What do you mean, Warden? Ah, whatever. Then your career had promised. Why would you quite possibly become the future governor of the prisoner? What on earth you'd be doing peddling tittle-tattle on Fresno Street? Well, it's been ten years since that. He worked at the prison, sir. Ten years. Well, I guess say for yourself, Vigil. I'm really dreadfully sorry about all this. 
yes, it's true. I am Daily Vigil. And you were the chief warder at Barclay Prison ten years ago. Can you confirm this? So where did Mr. Hugh Boone come from? Or was it Bone? I don't... Still don't know. Boone is... The other me. It's a name I invented. Well, evidently there is a good deal under the surface here. I'll explain everything. I'll tell you just how wretched my life has become. I got time for your life story. God dang it. Don't just come on, man. Hurry, make it quick, I guess. As you say, it was ten years ago now that my employment at Barclay Chief Order came to an end. <laughs> Having left the prison service, I searched for some new occupation by which to earn a wage. But times were hard in London, and I found no suitable engagements at all. In desperation one day, I turned my hand at selling wares on Fresno Street. But your wife appears to know nothing of this. She still maintains that you were the chief warder at Barclay Prison. I was utterly determined that my wife should not know of my failings, which is why I never told her. Uh, I opened an account in the bank under the name of Hugh Bone, and I rented the cheapest room I could find on Fresno Street. The scene of the crime we're investigating right now. Yes, that's right. Oh, my God. A place from which I could emerge every morning at eight. As a squalid peddler. Really. And transform myself back every evening at five. Into a well-dressed man about town before returning home. That quickly became my daily routine. My goodness. I... Oh my god. I was puzzled by the lack of furniture in the room. But that explains it. You had two lives. But why on earth didn't you just tell us that in the first place? I have a wife, sir. And two sons. Without wishing to sound self-conceited, they regard me with... Some pride. I couldn't bring myself to disappoint them. So instead, you decide to conceal your occupation? Oh my guy, he's feeding two sons and a wife? How does he... I mean, he must be pretty good at it. I don't know. He's making it work. I've made such a terrible mess of... Everything. Still, one thing doesn't add up. No matter how many tidbits of information you could sell to passing gentlemen, even at six pence a piece, you couldn't hope to match the salary you must commend at a chief warder. Very true, that is odd. So I've kept your family in comfort despite ten years of somewhat misbegotten employment. How did you do it? This isn't the whole story. That was all thanks to Inspector Gregson. Wait, what? He was- what? What on earth? I was some years after I'd invented Boone and begun my other life as a street seller. The inspector, that is. He he recognized me one day. Do you mean to say the victim was an acquaintance of yours? What'd you do to him? Then why'd you- I knew him from some time working at the prison. <sighs> When he saw what I'd become, he was deeply troubled for me and my family. And from that day forward, he visited me on Fresno Street with increasing regularity. Were you like a... not an accomplice, but... Keeping an eye out for things? What was that? What the... Dog, you're kind of weird. Then one day he asked me if I could carry out a secret assignment. A secret? Tell me more, what is it? I was to... Impersonate him. He, what? Why? How how big a deal is this? I mean, we no, now we know the redhead gang is just chomps, like... We always met in that little room so the inspector could brief me. Visit all... Wait. Visit Oz Crease tomorrow and take a statement from the proprietors. Proprietors? Oh my god, it's hard to deal with the Boston. It was always something along those lines. 
surveillance work, interviewing people. On those occasions, we would lend me his identification so people would believe who I was. My instructions were to make an impression, to let people know that Inspector Gregson had been at work. And for those services, he compensated me financially, almost acting as like a shadow. So he could be in two places at once. Dude. I don't know Greg, he had it in him. That's, you know, he's doubling up. Scotland Yard Inspector willingly relinquishing his papers uh, to deceive others. I, 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 I'm sure I need to point out uh, it's a very serious criminal offense. But why? What was the point of you impersonating him? Truthfully, do not know. All I can say is that the inspector warned me of numerous occasions. Of what? Now remember, Vigil. I need you some word. You don't blab about this to anybody, alright? Ever. So help me God. Even if... Well... Even if I end up in a croaker. Okay. So it was literally dead serious. He wasn't just goofing off with his time. In time, he started to bring papers with him to the room as well. It became something of a... Second office for him. Okay, this all matches up, but then why involve, why involve Van Zeeks? So in fact, the person who declared himself to be Inspector Gregson at the park, it really was, it was him, but under orders. It was me acting on the Inspector's orders. As usual, I removed my boon disguise, and then went as instructed to the park, armed with the Inspector's identification book. It never occurred to me. That the bruise on my neck might give me away. Dang. I mean, it's not, like, professionally trained. It makes sense. But what was Inspector Gregson? I mean, it's gotta be the dog collar and the, and the professor incident, right? Because that's what it was, was attached. Dog, where is this gonna go? I don't get it. What? Goodness. Well... It would seem this confession completely destroys the defense's case. It does not! What? Uh, Asogi, explain yourself. My learned friend's assertion was as follows. The victim was killed at another location on the day before his corpse was discovered. At the hands of those two red-headed league men. When they imprisoned the inspector. Did I say that? I... But no, that can't be. I say it again, no. After all, it wasn't the inspector who went to the park that day. It was me. Goodness. Finally, we have clarity. Ah, we had nothing to do with his murder of the inspector. And merci, Monsieur de la Defense, for proving it. What? What? So after all that. Dang, all right then. I don't know. We <laughs> took all that time to figure out another. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, well, man, figure out. We figured out there's someone else, you know, who had a play in this. If it wasn't, Mr. Vigil. Still could be for the record. Indeed, it appear that we have reached a de facto conclusion. The witness had no involvement in the murder of the victim. And I don't think Mr. Vigil has any motivation to kill. Uh -huh. As proven somewhat ironically by the defense. Dang, this Asogi guy is good. I hereby call and end a cross examination. Wait, what? Ah! Ah, Jesus Christ! Asogi! Hey, was that. Who was that? I actually don't know! Okay, it was him. Ah. Pardon me, my lord. But with your permission, I would like to pose one further question to the witness. Okay. Um, why? You already won. Right? A, a question, counsel? How come? It concerns the events of ten years ago. I believe you have been present at a very significant execution that was carried out at the time. Ten years ago? Uh, the execution of the professor, his dad. Right. I want to know exactly what you your involvement was. 
Answer me, man. Uh, uh. One moment, Council. I is this related to the current case? Technically, it might be. Naturally. It is the prosecutor's belief that this case and the events of ten years ago are extrinsically linked. Does the defense concur? I mean, shoot, I might as well. You're not yourself, Kazuma. Now it's calm and collected as usual. Oh, Kazuma-sama. No wonder he's acting this way. Mr. Vigil's memories of what happened ten years ago would tell the tale of Genshin Asogi's last moments. His own father. I know. I do understand that, but even so... I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Prosecutor Asogi. Do you genuinely believe that this question requires an answer in order to learn the truth behind Inspector Gregson's death. I need you to trust me. Please. Well, shoot, all right. Might as well. Then the defense has no objection. All right, in that case, answer the question. The truth is, I remember very little of that time. You, you say you've forgotten. I'm sorry to say, yes. As I said, I resigned from my role at the prison ten years ago. But for some peculiar reason, my memory of the events leading up to that moment are extremely hazy. Well, ain't that convenient. Does that not strike you strange, Mr. Narahoto? However, well, ten years ago is a long time. Have I forgotten the reason why he left? Such an important job. Yeah... And we have pretty good information on it. No redundancy pay. Details escape are being investigated. I mean, come on, man. What is going on here? Not only that, Mr. Vigil's claim contradicts what we already know. A human spirit is a fragile thing. It's broken all too easily, which is why we have a tendency to wrap it up for protection. Sorry? The human spirit? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. When we experience pain and suffering that we feel unable to bear, we block it up, obliterate it from our memory, and seal it away. But it never truly leaves us. If the seal is broken, the memories resurface. And when they do, that fragile spirit may be finally crushed. But I really don't. Katsuma-sama. But if it must be crushed, then so be it. Because the truth will not be so buried. It's coming out one way or another! Jesus. Alright. Uh... Right. Now I understand. It's clear what his intentions are. He means to expose the truth at any cost. Perhaps, if I pointed out the contradiction in what Mr. Vigil claimed, it might cause some crucial memories to come out. Should I present info? Duh. I'm pretty sure we have it. I have no idea what's going to, what's going to happen, but this is a court of law, and I have a duty to pursue the truth. Okay. Mr. Vigil, I'd like you to look at this. Evidence that clearly contradicts what you said. I mean... Harshly reprimanded. Results in him losing his job. I mean, that just says what happened. Jesus! Clear as day. Having him read it might jog his memories. Just a few moments ago, he made the following statement. I resigned from my role at the prison ten years ago. Oh, but he didn't resign! That's right! Well, yes. In other words, you claim to have left the post of your own volition. Uh, well, yes, of course. Why? Really, now? Tell me. Do you remember seeing this document beforehand? Uh, no, I don't. This is a dismissal notice ordering the immediate termination of prison staff. A.K.A. you. And the name on the notice. Well, it's yours, Mr. Vigil. I'm getting a little out of myself. Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, it's, it's my termination? So you didn't resign from the prison service at all. For some reason, you were dismissed as Chief Warder. No, there's some mistake. I'm sure, I'm sure I tendered my resignation. The dismissal notice is nonsense. Really, you'd quit being a warder to be be, be a, a peddler? 
I isn't it? No, I quit. Did I? I... If you were forcibly dismissed, there must have been a good reason. Clearly, you did something. Mr. Vigil, it's time to break the seal and have you remember. I... I'm... Uh, <laughs> Enough of that. According to the few remaining records, the final execution that you supervised was on 17th of June, 10 years ago, and on that day something very serious took place at Barclay Prison. The 17th? Of June, was it? Okay. Was that... The professor's execution? Pro... Professor? Well, I fess up to some things. I, I'm not a pro at it, but... Are you the chief warder at the time? It stands to reason... That you... Would have been present throughout the proceedings. Uh, it, it does sound... Familiar, yes. And yet, that execution never took place. In case you forgot, the convict, ostensibly executed earlier that day, later emerged from his grave. Well, I... The convict came back to life. Did he? In the cemetery in the middle of the night, there was a witness to it. However, the witness claims that a moment after, he saw the convict clambering out of his grave. A gunshot rang out from over his shoulder, and the bullet pierced the professor's chest, killing him instantly. Those may have been the professor's actual last moments. Yes. Yes. I... Seeing as you were in charge of overseeing executions at the time, you must know the truth about what really happened. It's in your head. Somewhere deep down. Vigil, were you actually the killer? That's what I'm starting to believe. Well, Chief Warder, Daily Vigil, I know there are memories in your head that can explain what happened on the 17th of June, 10 years ago. And now it's time for you to drag them out. Duh. Ah. You Tylenol? What, what is it? <laughs> oh, yes! The whole prison. It was complete chaos. The prisoner escaped. He was killed in the cemetery. The shocking news ripped through... Barclay like a hurricane. Uh, oh my god. So you- Wait, so we got fired for killing? What? I'm not- I'm not piecing this together at all. Do you mean to say, Mr. Vigil, that your memories of the time have returned? I mean, there's so much blurriness. My head, it's- It's like some floodgate is opened. The images, the screams! Oh, goodness. The papers. Seven pages. I must collect them. No, that's something entirely different. There were articles, reports, about a man who'd seen a ghost. Uh, yeah, Enoch Drebber. We know about him. But surely these reports were exaggerated. Uh, there were traces at the scene. Of what? Well, come on. In Lowgate Cemetery, a plot number 139. Blood. Lots of blood. That's where the man was buried, of course. Obviously, something terrible had happened there. Uh, wait, what? The depths of conspiracy and depravity from which this tale is emerging are quite staggering. I've reviewed the police records from the time, extensively. A thorough investigation was conducted by Scotland Yard to ascertain how the convict managed to escape in the first place. And the conclusion reached by the investigating team was that a member of the prison staff must have been involved. And, and that would be... Oh, you're not suggesting a prison warder abandoned the man's bid for freedom? 
Oh, who can save it? Memory so foggy. I... I was suspected of doing it. Of using that mass murderer's execution as a way to help him escape. You did what? I mean, I'm not that shocked. It, is, it said so on the card, basically. I remember now. <laughs> oh, the horror of it all coming back to me. One evening, a few days after the execution, some detectives came to the prison. I was called to the governor's office at the top of the watchtower. Oh, God, it's spinning. It's getting out of control. I forgot how he sounded. I'm sorry. It's been a while. Oh, I'm sorry, Dally. That's a serious business. But can I help you now? Our chief warder, you were responsible for overseeing the execution of four, huh? Well, it seems the fellas at Scotland Yard want to have a wee word with you. I boot it. You better pack your things, lad. Oh, he says laddie. You're to attend in person? That's not, that's like the worst Scottish accent I've ever heard in my life. Holy. Moving on. As soon as he told me that, my mind just went blank, and, and the next thing I knew, I, I... What? The professor. The most hated killer in our country's history. And I let him escape. I'm finished. My life is over. <gasps> oh my god! Down he goes. Holy crap. So we jumped? Then how was he? I mean, I guess he had to survive, but. Oh my god, get a doctor. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Brother, ah. Oh. He's bleeding all over the place. Court is adjourned for today. There's blood. Ah. Oh. Only a little bit. So, with Wait, Mr. The Vigil's collapse, proceedings came to an abrupt end for the day. Hey, you erupted rent. What the? I forgot you talking, Naruto. Once again, overshadowed by the legacy of that notorious killer, appearing like a cursed ghost ship on a foggy ocean. Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Vigil, Kazuma, and Gregson. All of them bound by invisible chains anchored to the same wreckage in the murky depths of the past. But the miraculous light that had been trying to cut through the gloom and shine on those tragic events was playing on the edges of the truth at last. 